I'd like to start off by thanking everybody for coming out. Uh, my name is Moses Tut. I'm the Vice President of Strategic Partnerships for Running Tap. Running Tap is Minnesota's first and only online marketplace that sells craft alcohol. So spirits, wineries, and as well as uh, beers and craft breweries. So just a company overview. Um, we essentially, breweries pay for the service, customers pay for delivery and tipping, and then there's no price markup. So you're paying exactly what you would at the brewery. Um, we got about 25 brewery partners. Uh, we just added two more. So we have over one in six Minnesota breweries is a running tap partner. Um, there's about 150 breweries here in Minnesota. 200 plus beer selection, including um, all sorts of styles, different stouts, IPAs, um, kind of it challenges people's palate and almost uh, gives them a discovery avenue um, to then go through different beer selections. We've served over a thousand customers as of June of 2017 um, is when we launched, so a little under a year that we've been operating. Um, here's a video here that kind of demonstrates what Running Tap does. Let's see if it plays. kind of running tap goes directly to the breweries and to the different places of production. So we've kind of innovated the three-tier alcohol system where um, as Uber disrupted the taxi industry, running tap has disrupted the three-tier alcohol system where we're going directly from the producer to the customer. Uh, the conventional route goes from producer, distributor, retailer, and then to the customer. So the producers at the top getting taxed three or four times and essentially getting a cut of their profits. Whereas running tap essentially saves them profits and directly goes to the customer where um, the customer doesn't have to, let's say, go to five, six different breweries all throughout the day or the week or however long they want to take. Um, what we've done is consolidated that brewery experience into one delivery. So the problem business to customer is that customers don't have access to 90 percent of the, the beers or the products that are being made. Um, so breweries, wineries, and all these other producers of craft alcohol, 90 percent of their inventories are not in liquor stores. So you're going to have to physically go to the tap room to actually get um, any of those products. The business to business problem, producers don't have alternative sales channels to reach these customers because of the three-tier alcohol system and how they're kind of restricted within that legal structure. So the solution is we provide producers with an online marketplace to sell directly to customers. So customers go on to essentially a website where they can find all the products, um, discover hundreds of different breweries, different um, wineries, different products, and they just pick it with the click of a button, put in their address, and sit at home and wait for their delivery. So the three different components, discovery and access, a variety of different beers, uh, convenience, ordering online right from your phone and or from your laptop, and you're supporting local breweries as well as supporting a local startup that delivers right to your house. And or office, uh, we cater parties, events, and we host different um, let's say company events just like these and um, get their beers delivered. So kind of the business model where the traditional three tier system, um, they're getting taxed two or three times. Whereas from the running tap model, it goes directly from the producer to running taps online website and then right to the customer. So saving everybody money. Um, here's the traditional retailers, our different competitors, um, you know, liquor stores, bars, anywhere where essentially a consumer can go and get beer or craft alcohol. There's also delivery services just like Drizzly, Postmates, and Bite Squad that are moving into the craft um, beer alcohol delivery. Um, the only difference, whereas we're in a very niche market where we only work with craft breweries, whereas Drizzly, they work with macro brewers with Heineken, uh, Bud Light, all these bigger brands. Uh, we don't specifically work with those big brands because we like it more local, um, more of that niche market, and we're trying to help uh, more of the local producers essentially get their products out there more. Um, so kind of the craft overview, um, the demand um, is going up for local. I think you know, there's a whole renaissance right, of 
people starting to want more local products, kind of supporting their local neighborhoods and just getting more homegrown stuff essentially delivered to them. Um, it's a $67 billion U.S. craft beer market. Uh, with that, two new breweries opening up every day. 50% uh, of Minnesota's craft beer market is the share in stock, so we're trying to tap into that $2 billion market is here in Minnesota. Um, and then there's about 100 plus new breweries uh, that are always popping up here. Uh, so with that again, um, Minnesota is a $2 billion market that we're trying to tap into. Um, and then within the next two to three years, we're trying to move into these different states. Um, a combined $19.6 billion combines these different states in terms of the craft beer market um, that we're trying to tap into. So our traction so far, um, we grew about 915% from quarter two of 2017 to quarter four of 2017 as well, from 65 orders um, within that quarter up to 660 within the fourth quarter. From breweries, we grew about 700% from three breweries all the way up to 24, and we're continually expanding. So with this traction, um, we hopefully will hit $1.2 million here by the end of our 2018-2019-ish fiscal year. Um, so with that, when we move into these other states like Minnesota, California, uh, Pennsylvania, and Texas, it shows the progression of if we keep the same traction by 2019, you know, we'll hopefully hit $12.9 million. And then by 2020, we'll be at $32 million within a combined four states here. So we're on our second round of funding here. Uh, initially, we started with 500,000 from a private investor, and we're looking for 450,000 um, for our next round here um, for about 12 months of financing. And what that will do is generate revenue of $1.2 million here with the current traction that we're showing with the orders, customers, and the different breweries. Here's our team. I'm the VP of Strategic Partnerships, also handle sales, relationships, our brother is the founder and CEO, so he's kind of on the back end, aerospace engineer uh, degree, background with Seagate, working with uh, clients like IBM and uh, Lenovo. And then we have our design and marketing guy that kind of handles the website and um, all the different back end stuff in our marketing. With that, here's just some testimonials, some features that we've been on um, from Star Tribune, um, Care 11, Mini Invo, Storm Lake Times, uh, Minneapolis Business Journal. Um, just some people kind of uh, giving their input on how the service was, um, you know, well worth the price paid, would do this again in a heartbeat, and kind of more just testimonials there, just to show. Uh, just a disclaimer there, um, just from the funding round and all the different financial aspects. So. Yep. So the biggest thing at this point, of course, is funding. You know, we're on our second phase, so if anybody has any um, networks and or different ideas of funding from venture capitalists, angel groups, um, that's more so what we're looking at. Uh, more so, we're trying to offer equity in terms of the funding that we then we'd be gained. So that's the biggest need at this point. And are there any other needs, like in terms of like partners? Yeah, I mean, it's always great. Um, any networks from corporate events, corporate uh, parties, corporate clients that you guys have, um, business outings, happy hours, um, any referrals in terms of distribution. So um, one partnership we're kind of working on right now is the Timberwolves. They approached us and kind of is looking at different avenues of getting Running Tap to have a stand within the Target Center that would kind of have all these microbreweries that we work with as a component of the Target Center and kind of that micro homegrown feel, um, just because they work with, I think, Anheuser-Busch right now and Goose Island. So those are more of the macro beers that you know usually people are used to. Um, but they're looking into how can we start supporting local microbreweries inside of the Target Center and kind of allow our fans and customer base to enjoy those different products. So that's an, a development there. So anything in that realm of distribution, um, any channels that anybody would have, and as well as different networks of um, just corporate events and outings and um, anywhere where beer is needed, essentially. <laughs> Currently, have a mobile app that you'll be improving on, or um, are you going to build a mobile app and our orders placed online? 
Yep, so the mobile app's in process. Um, I think what we're waiting for currently is to kind of get everything structured in terms of the website and um, how all the ordering processes, all the payment systems, kind of when we have a grasp on that, then we can easily transvert all of the structural stuff right to the app. So it's just basically just sitting there more on a, I guess, a development end once we have a more secure and stable process of how everything goes since, you know, we are a startup. It's only been under a year, so, and we're the first to market uh, in the Midwest, period, and second in the nation um, to do craft beer delivery, so. Four states, Pennsylvania, California, Texas, that you're adding in the next year or two. Mm -hmm. um, why those states, and what's the, uh, what's the vision for three years, four years, five years, and what states do you, how do you pick the states you move into? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think we looked at those states just because of the craft beer market. Um, you know, they have a very booming economy of different craft breweries that are popping up all the time. Um, you know, California especially, one of the biggest states uh, that produce, I think, seven point something billion um, is what their craft market is. Uh, so with that, they're the largest uh, craft market within the United States, so it'd be easier to transition within to California. Um, Texas and Pennsylvania, I think we looked at it more so as the top five or so uh, different craft markets to move into, and as well as they have off-sale uh, off laws and regulations, so that allows Running Tap to move into any state that then has those off-sale laws that allows microbreweries to off-sale. So essentially that's our whole business model is that if microbreweries are able to off-sell within each of those states, then we can easily just move into um, any of those states. So uh, with the looking forward of three, four years, I think um, first, you know, we'll have to try to tackle those new markets. And if successful, um, then look, you know, four or five years down the road as to what are the states to move into. How do you handle controls? Um, example, <coughs> that you didn't order go to the brewery, you pick up the beer, deliver it, and a 15-year-old boy answers the door. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we have IDS scanner, so 3M uses it, um, the DMV, Honeywell, and it's all online, they have to confirm they're 21, and as well as once our delivery drivers get there, they scan their IDs to match the actual order, and it'll prove that they're 21 of age, and it matches the order, their address, credit card reference, cross-reference. So everything's in place, and we hold all those receipts on an online repository. So then each of the breweries has their own essentially online account that then they can go into a Google Drive and look at all their customers that have ever ordered from them, because it's a law that for six months, every sale has to be kept in somewhere for at least six months, um, just for regulation's sake. Then the delivery driver takes it back to the warehouse, and um, we just leave it at that. So um, the responsibility is on the delivery driver. So with that, we train them and um, have protocols and procedures that, if anything were ever to not match up, then you know their immediate um, go-to is to not deliver it and to bring it back to the warehouse. No problem. of the application? It is. Uh, so my brother is a you know, back-end engineer. Um, he develops a lot of the website, a lot of the coding. Uh, he built the system that kind of allows people to order, and then it reconciles that, splits that into dates, shows us every day what orders are there. Um, so you know, he kind of has a background in developing and coding, and then as well as we outsource and um, you know, essentially yeah, just outsource and kind of work with people uh, remotely. No. <laughs> Delivery area, you said offices. Yeah, so it's about a 20-mile like driving radius from downtown Minneapolis. So uh, with that, it stands all the way to Burnsville, uh, White Bear, Chanhaskin, uh, St. Paul. Um, so it's a pretty far, wide radius there. Yep. So I'm on the boat and... <laughs> Yep, you can definitely do it. Anywhere you can get Domino's delivered, you can get beer delivered. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, I may have missed this part, but does the order come to the brewery? I mean, does somebody just call the brewery or do they call you? And then you go to the brewery, or does the brewery contact you to make a pickup and deliver? Yeah, so every day um, there's a cutoff time at 12 o'clock. So with that, you'd have to put in your order if you'd want to deliver that same day before 12. Um, and if you don't, then you have options of the next day. So then every day after 12, we'd send out a mass email to all the different breweries. They get a, essentially an order list <coughs> saying, hey, you got 25 pickups for today. They would confirm that within an hour to our window. And then we sent our delivery drivers from about depend on when they open as the brewery from 12 all the way to about four. They go out, pick up all from all these different breweries, come back to the warehouse, sort it out, and from four to 10 o'clock is our actual delivery scheduled times. Uh, there's two hour windows, so four to six, six to eight, eight to 10, and the customer picks those different slots and we know where to go within that two hour window or so. So the order processing everything is up through your site? Yep. I wouldn't say most of them, probably 50 or so. Um, so the biggest thing, too, is how to scale with the amount of breweries we have. Um, so we're more decisive at this point rather than, you know, let's put them all on, right? It's more of what ones add actual <coughs> value to the service, uh, which ones are people asking for, which ones are most popular, and it's more selective at this point. Um, whereas before when we started, Yes, we want it all in any, um, but at this point now, um, you know, we found it more strategic to then go about being selective and getting more of what the consumers want and as well as what's being out there um, in the craft market, right? Yeah, what are people market, talking about? But they're not all in the Twin Cities market, right? So right, exactly. Yep. Yep. And so? I was going to ask, what one thing can you think of that you wished <laughs> just one. <laughs> I think the biggest maybe unknown currently is that we're operating in a new space. You know, like I said, we've disrupted the three tier system and we're the first to market in the Midwest um, and as well as second in the nation. So it comes with some learning curves, whereas from the regulatory standpoint, um, we spent six months at the prior of launching this in June with AG, with our lawyers and their lawyers going back and forth, kind of um, proofing, I guess, the idea and making it legal um, from their standpoint. Um, after six months, they kind of came back and said, well, you know, you guys are kind of out of our jurisdiction. Like, we've never seen an idea like this and or uh, service. So we really don't know how to regulate you guys. Um, so here's a set of guidelines to follow. Um, so it's been a year or so um, from that point, and they, they came back now with kind of more regulations as to how to govern us or how we should go. They, didn't, they still haven't figured it out. They just gave us more things to follow. Um, so with that, it kind of changes over time, whereas there's not a set um, definite set of guidelines to follow. Um, so they can come in basically at any time, right, and kind of switch things up or say, hey, we, we liked this last year, but this year we don't. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing currently that is, I guess, an unknown as to the future of craft beer delivery and kind of this whole online e-commerce platform. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's our biggest learning curve right now is just kind of going along with how the regulations move and how the regulators themselves feel at certain points of the business. So. Pioneers get all the <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah. When you, you mentioned that uh, a noon cutoff for your delivery, mm -hmm. you look at all the competition for other, whether it's Target, Walmart, Amazon, mm -hmm. it's one hour delivery, two hour delivery, same day. Yeah. Um, is, is, the, is the limitation, is it limited by your technology and drivers today or do you have plans to be able to 
you know, move it to same day, several hour type of delivery. Mm -hmm. To me, rather than moving into other states, the impulse buy right. seems like a much greater opportunity. Because if I can plan, I can go to the brewery or the liquor store or whatever right. uh, and, and get it for the next day. Uh, but if I'm having a barbecue or you know planning a Saturday afternoon, right. pool party or whatever you're, you're doing, right? Well, hey, let's let's bring some craft beer in. So right. It's like there's a much higher revenue opportunity there to bring that same day, you know, couple hour delivery. Right. At the beginning, um, we did start off with one hour delivery and on demand delivery. Um, so it was more of a test trial and pilot period where we spent probably about six months doing that. Um, I think the overwhelming, I, our overwhelming kind of result is that logistically it just didn't make sense. Whereas, uh, you know, a driver would have to basically get up and go to these different breweries if a customer orders from six or seven different breweries, right? And then have to try to complete their delivery within an hour, two hour window. Whereas traffic hits, right, right at four or five, right around those times. Um, it's very congested in the city and as well as if they're going to St. Paul, Southern Minneapolis, they're going all the way to uh, Plymouth, all these different brewery destinations and having to try to deliver it within an hour. It kind of just didn't make sense over time. And it would cost more than, um, I guess, the revenue that was coming in, right? Um, it would be more of, we'd be losing money within those operations um, rather than making money. So on a logistical standpoint, um, it just wasn't making sense. And I think from a technological standpoint as well, um, we're looking into kind of a Uber, um, Lyft type of model where if we could pin different drivers that are all consolidated on an internet based type of app or service that we can make where an order comes in and it pings it off of the location and a driver can pick it up and say alright I'm the closest one to it I'll take it you know I think that model would work better for an on demand type of delivery service um, but at this point we kind of just cut it out um, out of the whole model, and then we're looking into bringing it back um, down the road here. So I think it's more of a learning curve of going through the trials and tribulations and kind of learning through what works best. And you know, from there, I think we'll probably reintroduce it down the road once we have more of a bigger infrastructure as well as more of a technological maybe solution to that issue there. Yeah, I think to Tim's point, I mean, it could be almost that, you know, when somebody logs into your system, it could be, I'm in Bloomington, what are my options? Right. And at that point, it's like, your option is Wooden Hill Brewery in Edina. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yes, we could have it there in an hour and a half, and, you know, that's the way the system would work. It's right. Like, you know, I want beer, and I want it right now. What are my options to, to get right. something? So right. We, we went through it just this last weekend. We're, mm -hmm. we're out by Enki, and mm -hmm. uh, it was like, well, we decided do we want to go, do we want to uh, uh, go, if there was an option right. where we could have gone on and said, uh, you know, that brewery, right. deliver from that brewery just whatever they have, mm -hmm. not go to five or six, but right. single, single spot, yeah. single option, close proximity right. with the limited, and yeah, and maybe there's a premium charge for it, right. because I want that brewery and I want it now. Right. Um, yeah. I go back to my college days with the <laughs> we had you know, we're we're sitting there in the house and we we, 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 we needed more something. And we called, and half an hour later more something But if if you had that I think there's right. there's a yeah, there's a premium charge that I would be willing to pay. Mm -hmm. For that level of service, right. uh, and then you know, it gives you an AB. Yeah, it's almost a similar amount to the rental guy that was here earlier. It's like, here's what I need. You know, what are my options? Where's the closest thing that I can know that I can get this to right. Yeah, instead of saying no, you say, well, right. here's yeah. 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 the options. Yeah. I might not have it for you, right. but here's an option. Right. Yeah, I definitely think it's a great idea and you know it's worth, you know, going back to the team and kind of playing with that and seeing how we can implement it within 
kind of a proximity race uh, radius where you know it's limited to your location or where you're trying to order from um, with that on-demand feature. So yeah, thank you for that. Can you take beer at your warehouse? You can pour a growler and go. Nope. So. No, nope. so we are strictly only an online e-commerce platform that connects the producers right to the customer. So we're just a delivery and logistics and e-commerce company of it. And you can't deliver cans or cans, right? No, nope. so we're restricted to only the two sizes within the off-sale laws. So that's a 64 ounce, which is equivalent to about a six pack of beer and as well as a Crowler, which is a 750 milliliter, an equivalent of two 12 ounce cans. Yeah. Just uh, wondering, local distilleries, would that be a whole new legal level? Would that be an option? Um, it would. Um, I think the issue right now that we're kind of looking at is um, sizing. So with each person, they're limited to one, like 750 per person. So then, art, yeah, 775. Yeah, exactly. So we would have to somehow, through the uh, technology side of things, figure out a process where it would only limit one per person <laughs> per <laughs> order. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So if that's it, what is your typical order amount? It ranges from about thirty to forty dollars. Um, so that's anywhere from a growler and two crawlers, or two growlers themselves. Um, so yeah, typically right around thirty to forty dollars or so. so. We chatted briefly at the mini bar about subscription mm -hmm. concept. I know that uh, when we're in uh, California, we had wine subscription. Mm -hmm. We would get a mystery two bottles every month. Kind of fun because you didn't have to choose what they're going to send. Mm -hmm. I wonder if something like that would be great. I don't know all the craft beer in Minnesota. It would be nice to sort of, you guys choose and send us. Right. Be fun to so we, uh, we, we did test something like that um, where over the holiday we had a, a 12 months of beer advent calendar. Um, or no, there's two different products. There was an advent calendar, 25 days of beer, where every day you got beer. And then there was 12 months of beer, <laughs> where essentially every month you would just schedule in from a coupon card that you could put in a code. It'll give you a value and you can order up to $25 worth um, up to beer and then you just get it delivered to your house. So I think maybe the nuance is that having people remember to order every single month and put in their coupon code, maybe that was the hindrance or maybe the uh, breaking point of it being that successful where people would rather just know that they're getting it and forget about it, right? And kind of just have it show up. But the problem with that is uh, logistics, right? Whereas they have to be home, they have to sign it, um, they have to show ID and kind of coordinating all those different logistics at once um, kind of becomes an issue where they just forget, right? They're at a softball game, they're at their kid's performance, they're somewhere. And we call them and, you know, they're like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> you know, you're, you're at my house? Like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, can you just drop it off? But we can't. Um, just leave it there. So we'd have to reschedule and it kind of became a logistical issue um, with that. Have you talked to businesses? We talked to businesses as well. So, like, Industrious, their co working space downtown, we cater their happy hours every Thursday. And then other corporate events, uh, launches, startups, uh, parties anniversaries, any, anything where beer can be served, right? Little agencies all have beer. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if you could bring us a beer every day at four, yep. that's a subscription. Yep. That's a subscription. Exactly, exactly. So we've, we've tried to move into different partnerships like that, and um, we're looking for more. Um, so I think our biggest maybe weakness point is that we're all not from Minnesota. Um, so all the co-founders, everybody here, you know, our networks are starting off on a clean slate, right? Um, whereas we don't know anybody into these different business networks, the business world, um, we're kind of just starting up. And um, with that, we don't have any kind of warm leads, right? Um, we're just going in from a cold, a cold lead standpoint. Um, so with that, with the Minnesota Midwest kind of culture, 
you know, it takes a year, a couple of years to kind of build those relationships, and so nobody. Need <laughs> you need our business friends that are drinkers. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I would love to have a conversation <laughs> with them and send them some links or some complimentary beers there. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't like free beer, right? <laughs> Let's give Moses a round of applause.